things hit different when, when you're 30. They sure do. How old am I? I'm 30, right? Am I 31? 1997. I'm 31, aren't I? Am I almost 32? No, I'm almost 32. Oh my God. Well, that'll be another thing I can dwell on for the rest of the day. <laughs> Hey guys, so today's video is going to be something related to makeup. So I am going to be doing a makeup look and I'm going to just have fun with it. Uh, I've been doing this the last few videos because I'm trying to re-inspire, use what I have, not just a bunch of reviews all the time. It feels as though the launches have slowed a little bit. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Maybe it's because ColourPop took a week off. ColourPop, thank you for taking a week off. Today, I am going to play with some makeup, do something real sparkly, do something real fun, and just have a good old time. We're gonna chat at the same time. I may respond to a couple of different unpopular opinions. You guys left them for me last week. I've already filmed that video. Man alive, I was wearing my hair in a ponytail and it, it wasn't cute. I don't, I don't love, the makeup was so basic. So we're, we may just not, that may just never see the light of day. Before we jump into the video, you guys know that I have been working with HelloFresh for about the last year. Love the service so much. If you don't know what it is, they are a home delivery meal service. So they deliver the meals directly to your door weekly. In the insulated box that you get, there are three meals and each one is in an individual bag with all pre-portioned out ingredients. So you don't have to measure anything. It's all pre-measured out for you in there. The meals take about 30 minutes to make. So you're not in the kitchen for hours and hours. They send you with a recipe card and it's got six really easy steps on it and we love it so much we've been using it for what feels like forever now and it's just been such an incredible thing it's introduced us to new flavors that we have never really tried before but have introduced into our daily meals that we make they have vegetarian meals to choose from which we made this week which you guys are going to be seeing here they have calorie smart vegetarian they also have a hall of fame which we order from we try to order from every time which we did this week as well and the craft burgers also you can add extra meals to your weekly order if you want to or they have extras like dessert desserts, garlic bread, cookie dough. You can change your delivery days, food preferences, or you can skip a week whenever you need to. This week we made veggie burrito bowls, which were so delicious. They were really fresh. I loved all the ingredients in them. Everything we've tried from HelloFresh has been amazing. Many of the meals that we have made, we end up going and remaking them, like going to the store and buying the ingredients and remaking them ourselves for like friends and family. HelloFresh is now from 566 per serving. So good. That's really good. It's really zesty. Try it again, Michael Scott. There you go. If you guys are interested in signing up for HelloFresh or giving it a try, I will have the code in the description of this video, but you guys can go to hellofresh.com and enter the code rawbeauty8 at checkout. And that will save you $80 off with eight free meals on your first month of signing up for HelloFresh. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the beginning portion of this video. And now I'm gonna move on to some makeup and I'm gonna be gluing things to my face. So I hope you guys are ready to see a lot of this motion over and over and over. But we're gonna chat too, because I have a lot to talk about. I haven't filmed in a little bit. There's some reasons. Oh, does anyone care about those reasons? I, I don't know. So this palette, which is NYX Modern Dreamer, I'm probably gonna go in with some of this. I have no, no idea what I'm doing, but I just want to do something. Well, maybe these are just clear. These are clear, so they'll go with any color that I choose. <laughs> What shall lest I do? I don't know, but all I can tell you is that my hair is bothering me. I'm gonna have a mint in my mouth because I feel like I need it. So you may see it and hear it clinking around. Just know that that's what it is. So I'm gonna put on my foundation real quick. So what's new over the last week? Well, it's that time of the month. It has been a painful day. I have been having cramps all day long. Sitting on the couch on a heating pad, just crying, just, just ow. So that's what I've been up to for most of the day. They finally went away and I am here. So I was wondering if you guys would be interested, let me know. This is way TMI for some of you, probably, but for the others, probably not. Maybe I'll go with like a pinky orange today, like a corally sort of moom. This may sound like a little TMI to some of you, but I've been contemplating this video idea. Sam has already done one, like Samantha Ravendahl. She made a whole series about period cups. I know. I know, to some people, they're like, I, 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 it's a lot. But trust me, I felt the same way. I felt like it's not for me. 
I'm not gonna be the one. And when I first started my channel, I feel like I used to talk a lot more about kind of things that were like a little more like iffy topics. And I've just really backed off of it, not because I'm not interested in talking about things, but because, I don't know, I just became kind of a, a wimp. Not a wimp, because I can have the conversation. There is no holds barred. Like I am one of those people that I feel completely comfortable talking about anything with anyone. I just guess that like the longer YouTube has progressed, it's just kind of become all about makeup. And sometimes I talk about life things, but I just feel like, you know, as I go on, I sort of back off of it a little bit. Anyway, let me know if you guys are interested in a video about period cups. I know, I'm not like trying to piggyback off of Samantha here. She made some really great videos, but I feel like there's never too many because I never thought I would be somebody that would use one. Literally never, ever in my life. And now I'm like, such an advocate for them. If I ever have somebody bring up the word period around me, you better get ready because I'm gonna talk to you about a cup. Because I was one of those people that was like, ah, it's not for me, it's not for me, I can't imagine it, I can't think think of it, I can't like it, I don't know if I'll ever be able to realistically get on board with that, and now I really have. And so now I wanna tell other people like, you know what, all the questions that you have that you may be wondering like, can I do it? Is it, is it weird? What about this question? Give me the nitty gritty like down and dirty, really explain it. I'm happy to do that for you. So if you guys are interested and if you've ever been interested interested in trying one, but you're like too afraid or you just don't feel like you're that bitch. Same. And now I'm that bitch. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. I'll definitely make the video. I feel like the more people that talk about it, the more likely people are to try it. And I want more people to try it because I want to get the word out there that it's really not, it's not as bad as you think it is. I've been setting my face with powder. Don't think I'm going to today. I think I'm just gonna like go in and have a good time. I think I wanna go for like this color. I don't know, I'm really feeling like this set of colors up here. Those are so pretty. From the Modern Dreamer palette from NYX. So I think I'm gonna take that middle shade that I just showed and just sort of sweep that all over. That is more pigmented than it seems like it's going to be. These palettes are really high quality. NYX really knocked it out of the park with these. The Modern Dreamer and the, um, the Swear By It palette, both really, really good. So if you've wondered and you want like a really good, big, lots of colors palette, a big, lots of colors palette, these ones are good. We went to the pumpkin patch this last weekend and it was so sweet and so fun. I loved it so much. The pumpkin patch is one of the best places ever and we have such a good one near me. We go there every year so it's like tradition now and it's got such a good feel to it. It's so sweet. We did like a hay ride and there's a corn maze and we go in and we pick out our pumpkins and I love it because they have these really weird looking, this one pumpkin that we got this year. It looks like peanuts shells all over the outside of it. It's so unique. It was so fun. We went with my little niece and my dad, my sister, and my husband and it was so much fun. I'm gonna go with this shade now, which is just kind of a darker version of that same shade. I think I'm actually gonna take that same color that I just took. We're gonna do a little... I love to do this with my bronzer anyway. It's fun to do in unnatural colors as well. So I wanna talk about Halloween, okay? I wanna talk about Halloween. I addressed this in the video that I'm not even gonna upload where I'm reacting to your unpopular opinions. That video, it got negative real fast. It really did. And I don't want that at all. I have had people asking me like, where's your Halloween videos? Where's your Halloween videos? So I have been working on <laughs> what would be one very, very epic, incredible, amazing Halloween video for the last two weeks. Now, I wasn't one of those people that got super prepared like everyone else. Halloween crept up on me and it crept up on me fast. I was not ready for it this year. I didn't even realize it was so close to October and then, oh my God, time got away from me. And other people were like done with their costumes. I hadn't even thought about it. I have a list that I've had ongoing in my phone for the last four or five years. And I just add to it. Every time I th have a good idea or I see something or there's a show or a movie or a costume idea, that I have in mind, I add to that list. And there's been one costume that I've had on that list for the last three years, three, four maybe. And I haven't gotten around to it because I thought it's too big, it's too big. It's not, there's no, there's no way I'm gonna be able to create it. I'm building a mask, okay? So that's what I'll tell you. And I have been making this mask for weeks. It's not just one, it's two. It's turning out really, really good. I'm really, really happy with it. And I tried something new that I had never done before with this, with a technique. And I was really, really happy with it. It was taking forever, but I thought this is going to make it so much better. The texture is gonna be better. The whole application is gonna be better. And so I worked on it for like 10 hours one day and I was just sitting there and working and working and working and working. And I finally got it to a point that I feel like was really good. And then I woke up the next morning and I 
assume within the drying process of the evening, it lost its integrity, the structure, and it broke. All of the 10 hours of work that I had done prior. So then I had to redo a huge portion of that work. It set me back days. And then we have some life stuff going on, which I won't be able to talk about for a little while. No, I'm not pregnant, which I'm gonna be talking about in just a moment. This video is gonna get deep. I didn't plan this video at all, but I just wanna talk to you guys because sometimes I find myself like censoring myself so much with things that I wanna talk about because I don't like being misunderstood on the internet. And you know what? I, I just can't care. I can't care about that anymore. People will misunderstand what they wanna misunderstand and they'll take what I say and run with it in any way. I'm just gonna talk. So anyway, that set me back. And because of the things that are going on in life and just the way things are, I don't think I'm gonna get it done before Halloween which is devastating to me because I have been working on it for weeks. I'm so happy with the progress so far, but I'm maybe with one of them, I'm done maybe halfway and the other, I'm maybe a sixth of the way done. And Halloween is in two days. So I just can't see it realistically being done and I'm so upset about it. I really was hoping to get this video done in time and you know what? I have to just realize that shit happens and unfortunately it broke and I it set me back days and days and it's just such a pain in the ass because the, the layer of it that broke was the layer that takes so long to dry and because of that length of drying process, it, it fucked me, <laughs> it did. It's just, I'm so upset about it. I woke up the next morning and when I saw it laying on the ground, I was like seething <laughs> because it was just such a waste of my time. Basically, I may have to put this costume off till next year and it's already been four years. So it just is what it is at this point. I don't even know what the whole landscape of YouTube will look like next year. God, I still hope people care. I also talked about this on Twitter the other day, but it's just been so hard because I've had people being like, where are your Halloween videos? Where are they? And trust me, I'm right there with you. I deleted the tweets because I, I just didn't like feeling like people were misunderstanding me. Again, I really don't like being misunderstood at all. It's like my least favorite thing in the entire world. It's just, I go into things with like the best intentions and I really like it when my point comes across in the right way and I don't like it when it does the opposite. And I feel like those tweets were just coming off in, off in the opposite way, almost like I was complaining. So here's the thing with YouTube. I would exclusively do special effects content and I would do so much more of it if YouTube supported that kind of content the way that they used to. It used to be, so, oh man, it was a good time on YouTube back in the day when you could just post anything. <laughs> you can post anything. It was just not even a thing. It was not even a problem. YouTube allowed whatever you wanted to do. And it was just such a beautiful time to be alive. People were doing special effects content left and right. There was body painters all across the platform. It was such a good time. You guys remember that? Oh man, it was like prime time, 2015 to 17. Oh, it was just such a good time. But 17 is where everything changed. That's when Adpocalypse came along. And I'm sure we all know what that is. But in case you don't know, what happened was, there was a big advertiser meltdown, basically. The advertisers came across the platform and said, we aren't going to advertise on specific types of content anymore. And instead of YouTube fighting back against that at all, because everything is about money, YouTube was like, okay. And so they demonetized millions and millions and millions of videos. And while demonetization may not seem like that big of a deal to some people, people are like, okay, well, what's the big deal? You just don't get ads on that video anymore. Fair and true. However, when YouTube demonetizes content, they also quit pushing that content out in the algorithm. You know, hear the word algorithm all over the internet all the time. God, it's, if I'm not so sick of the word algorithm, who'd care about an algorithm? Well, when you're a YouTuber, that algorithm the bots, the computers, what pushes the things out into notifications, that's everything for a YouTuber. God, I look infected. That's fine. Whatever, it's Halloween. That algorithm is everything. That algorithm tells new people who don't know you yet, like, hey, here's this really cool video you might wanna watch. Or it also pushes it out to your subscribers' feeds. It does everything, that algorithm is everything. And when you quit being recommended in that, it's devastating for the creator because, so you'll see the numbers rising, 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 and the views are going up and it's pushing out to new eyes. And then the video gets demonetized by the algorithm. And then you can literally watch at the demonetization mark, how many people are viewing it. And it's just this massive, massive waterfall of a drop off. And people have confirmed that with, uh, you know, testing out and seeing how things work with their own numbers. And I can speak for myself personally for it to be true. And specifically the reason that we're talking about this is because Halloween content, special effects content, all of it was really badly hit during the whole adpocalypse thing. And that's why 
a lot of times I feel you've seen your favorite creators just not making as much Halloween content. And if they do, it's really safe content because it's not what it was. You put this time and effort into these videos and I can only speak for myself here. And I will mention a couple of other creators who I've noticed this with as well. You put all of this time and effort in and special effects videos. They just take so much more time, specifically the way that I like to do them. Like when I'm doing a special effects video, I like to sit down and do the tutorial, kill the look, work on it for hours and hours. Usually the looks take me anywhere from six to 12 hours to apply, just depending on what they are. And that doesn't include any of the prep time. So like, uh, I'll use one of my videos, for example, the Chatterer, Hellraiser. Oh my God, that was, I'll link it up here. It's demonetized. It is one of my favorite videos that I've ever done. It's so fun. It was such a fun look to do. It took me probably, mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it all out here for you. And this isn't to like complain or anything. It's just to explain it. Cause I feel like sometimes people are like, why doesn't YouTuber do X, Y, Z anymore? This is just to explain my kind of side of things here. The mask itself, that probably took me sculpting it and uh, painting the teeth, everything. It probably took me like anywhere from 12 to 15. 16 hours to make just the mask alone. That doesn't include application or anything. To film the video, including applying the appliance on my face and doing all of that probably took, I would say application was like maybe six to eight hours. Yeah, we sat there, Jordan actually, Jordan Hans, she flew in from her state and came and filmed that with me. So we were filming that together, but I probably took around six to eight hours to apply the whole mask and get the costume on and everything. And then we drove to a location, which was like this creepy rundown building. And we filmed for probably another five, six hours at this location. And then Jordan and I sat down together and we edited that intro together. So we FaceTimed or Skyped and then we did screen share Skype. That's what it was. We Skyped and screen shared and then edited the intro together. And that took eight hours, I would say. Doesn't seem like that long because the intro itself is only like a minute and a half, but these things take time. You have to find music and songs and sound effects and, and do your transitions and make sure that the vibe of it is really good and feels creepy and then downloading all that. You know, it's, it's a lot of time. That doesn't include the editing of the video itself, which is putting all the clips together of all the previous time that I've just said, all the intro clips, all the, you know, slow motion clips, which you have to do, like they render and they take forever, ever, ever. So that doesn't even include editing the video down and then doing the voiceover and then uploading it all of that time it was it's like 70 hours worth of work for that one video that as soon as it was uploaded to YouTube, YouTube instantly demonetizes it and instantly doesn't put it out into the algorithm. It is the most unbearably frustrating thing as a creator to work so hard on something that you are so proud of to have the platform that you are posting it on do nothing with it. It's just like, oh, I can't even begin to explain how sucky it is to put so much time and effort into something to have it feel so fruitless. Some people did see it, but all that time, all that energy, all the money, all the costuming, everything, all the shooting on location and the editing and just the time. I mean, Jordan flew here from another state to film this video with me. So that's uh, the plane tickets, all, all of it, everything for zero dollars and for hardly anyone to see it. It is the most frustrating part of content creation now on YouTube. And so when people ask, why don't you do YouTube videos around Halloween as often anymore? It's not because I'm greedy. It's not because of anything like that. And I think a lot of times that's what it comes off as because some people see that and they're like, oh what, so you can't get paid for one video? It's not like that. It's to say that I'd say 75% of my Halloween content is demonetized by YouTube. So it doesn't get pushed out in the algorithm. Hardly anyone sees it. If they they do see it. I'm making no money off of it, which it's not all about money, but you know, let's be honest for a moment. I don't think any of us want to put, you know, 70 hours worth of work into something to make zero dollars off of it. I'm gonna try to like kind of conceal my brows a little bit if I can. So of course it's not all down to money or anything like that. Because frankly, at the end of the day, those videos are really fun to do. And there are some talented ass people on the platform. Like, by the way, I'm just taking a little spoolie and some concealer and I'm like, I'm trying to create like a blonde brow look. I'm trying to really light my brows out so they almost look like like they've disappeared into my face so it just feels really bad when you do all that work for seemingly no reason the easy way to go around that would be to do safer content but that's not what we want to do it's about art and it's about creation and it's not about stifling the ideas that you have just to put out videos for the sake of putting out videos like for me these masks that i've been working on for the last few weeks probably going to be instantly demonetized 
And it's just like, it's so frustrating for creators. So many of your favorite creators that you probably love and you're wondering like, where's all their Halloween videos? They're probably not doing them anymore because it's just, it's just a different time, man. I can't even explain how different it feels to be a creator and to be doing this and to have hardly anybody see it. And if they do, it's just feels like YouTube itself is, they don't, they don't care. You know, they don't care about creators. It's all about the bottom line. It's all about advertisers. It's about those advertising dollars. And it feels really bad to be somebody who's putting so much time and effort and money and love and so much into these videos to have them just fucking flop man, just flop. That is probably the main reason that so many of your favorite creators are gone doing other things. A lot of people are either changing their content to be something completely different, or a lot of people have left the platform. Some of my favorite artists that have done such incredible FX work, they, they can't even post videos anymore. Some of their videos are just straight up removed from the platform. Most of them are demonetized immediately. And as a, somebody that does that, I don't blame these creators for leaving because why would you stay on a platform that clearly doesn't have your best interest at heart? Anyway, I'm not trying to like rant. I think that that's the main reason that a lot of people are leaving. I, I made a video about it. Oh man, 2017 was such a good time. It was bad because that was the year that I was demonetized so often, but that was my proudest Halloween year. Guy Fieri's my favorite video that I've ever done still to date. If you guys haven't seen it, my diner drive-ins and dives Guy Fieri, that one didn't get pushed out at all either. That was back in the day, that was like four years ago. Man, that's still one of my favorite videos that I've ever done, the intro, oh, I love it so much, it's like my favorite. 2017 was when Adpocalypse happened, but that was the year I tried the hardest. So the year prior, I did 31 days of Halloween. And wow, that almost killed me. <laughs> That almost killed me. That was so difficult because I was filming, editing, uploading most of the time on the same day. And Jordan and I were doing it at the same time. And we were FaceTiming every day and just like crying because we weren't sleeping. And it was just such, it was so, oh my God, it was wild. It was wild, but it was so fun. And it was awesome to be able to push ourselves and do that. That was when YouTube was still allowing you to create and they weren't just so concerned about ad money. And it was just, oh man, it just felt, like such a different time to be on the platform. It was so cool. I remember I uploaded my first video and man, I worked so hard on it. It was that burned witch video that I made. And I love that video so much. I love the intro. We went and shot all of the videos on location. None of them were just filmed in the house. Like they were all shot at a different place. And I just love them so much. And I was so proud of the videos. And that video got instantly demonetized, like the second it went up. And that's when I realized, because I had done a lot of my videos prior and they were scheduled out and they all went yellow. And it was just like, that's when I knew, man, things are about to get bad. And even now, anything even slightly controversial gets demonetized right away. Like my microscope video that I did, the second one, that was demonetized. And if you look at the views on it compared to my other one that I've done, you can see just how different they really are. And the only difference was that right after uploading, it got hit and like I said, quits getting pushed out and then once it gets re-monetized, they eventually did watch it and eventually did re-monetize it. It's too late then. All the views are already done for, you miss out on all that revenue, which again is just only one facet of it. It's not a lot about money, it's about then the video's killed, it's crashed, it's down into the ground and then uh, never gets pushed out in the YouTube sphere again. I keep talking about demonetize, demonetize. A lot of people hear that and they think that just means you're not getting ads on the video. And I do kind of explain it a little bit further, but I want to take it a little bit one step further. So when you hear me say demonetize, it sounds like it just means that you don't make any money off of that. What it means is that YouTube flags the video as not advertiser friendly. So there are limited to no ads on the video. And when that happens, you'll hear me explain that like you'll get a drop off because it doesn't push it out into the algorithm, but more so than just not pushing it out into the algorithm. What happens is the more videos you have, demonetized or s deemed and suited not advertiser friendly, it means that your channel starts to get striked as like more, either more mature content. When that happens, all of your videos stop getting recommended. And it's just like a downward slope from there. So you have to be careful as a creator not to consistently make videos that keep getting hit with that because it can really start to affect your entire channel, not just individual videos. I just wanted to clarify that when you keep hearing me talk about demonetization, it's not just about not getting money for those videos, which is one facet of it, is that you have to be careful that you're not just out here making videos that are going to potentially get your channel striped or removed. You know what I mean? It's happened to people. 
people have had entire playlists deleted off their channel, the system will flag your channel as not appropriate and then start being a huge problem. So just to explain a little further. Okay, back to the video. So anyway, that was the longest rant ever to say, that's why you haven't seen any Halloween content because I'm working on what I was gonna do it broke. So yeah, there's that. So I also want to talk to you guys about this doctor's appointment that I had last week. I talked a little bit about it on Twitter and I was so shocked. So I said, I had a doctor's appointment today and it was one of the worst doctor appointments that I've ever had. Um, the doctor was so dismissive of me and was in and out of the room within five minutes. And when he walked out of the room, he said something. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. It was a horrible experience, but I wanted to mention it mostly because, wow, I I was just so shocked when I talked about that on Twitter. Just how many of you were like, oh, I've had doctor's appointments just like that. I mean, there's like literally hundreds of comments of people being like, yep, I've had doctor's appointments like that too. And that's really alarming to me. How many of you guys can relate? That's not good. I don't want you to be able to relate in this circumstance. In the slightest, I don't want you to be able to relate to this. You know, you never know on YouTube what's too much information to share because the more you share, the more people have to run with and to talk about. And you know, it's honestly scary to be a YouTuber and to have people like speculating about your life and talking about you, even though you share it and you know that like the more you share, the more people have to talk about. I want to share because I feel like, and I think this is that whole, I watched the podcast, the approachable podcast from uh, Samantha and Alyssa, and it is about like parasocial relationships and paras a parasocial relationship essentially is like feeling like you're friends with somebody that you've never actually met, like how you may watch a YouTuber online and be like, oh my God, we're best friends, but you've never actually met them and they have no idea who you are. It's just like this, it's a parasocial relationship. It's not even like based on reality. It's almost like me, like back in the day, I like felt like, oh, I was going to be married to Zach Hansen. Little did I know, he didn't even know I existed, huh? Hurtful. The curse of it is that I feel like I am friends with you guys. And then I say things that I probably, you know, shouldn't share so much of. And people that aren't so friendly with me on the internet take that information and use it against me and say that I share too much. And so I think I am like a serial oversharer when it comes to the internet. I have been since, I started YouTube because I just really like to share what's going on in my life because what I'm going through, you, you maybe also be going through. And if you are, maybe you, maybe I could help somebody or maybe I can give somebody some perspective. Even though I tend to overshare a lot, I'm gonna keep talking, I think, and not worry about that because I don't want to be scared away from saying the things that may help somebody out there. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Let me know as well if you guys are interested in seeing a video about PCOS. I've talked to you guys about this before. I've had many of you say that you want it. I don't really know how far in deep dive to go into it. I'm gonna stick some of these pearls onto my face. I like this little packet of these tiny little pearls. This is back from Face Awards time too. It's all full of like crepe hair and stuff. I've been having some health issues. I have a lot. You guys know this. Uh, I'm not gonna get too far into it, but I do have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was diagnosed when I was 19. I'm shocked how many people have it. Whenever I talk about it online, the sheer amount of people that are like, I have that too. I'm like, wow, that is so crazy to think of just how many people have this condition that I didn't even, I didn't know that so many people suffer with it. So I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is also PCOS is how you'll hear, hear me reference it. It's an endocrine disorder. Basically there's so much to know about it. I can talk about it further in a video if you don't know anything about it, but it causes all sorts of fun issues. But we thought there were some other his health issues going on as well. My doctor did. So she sent me in for some testing six months ago. And when my results came back for the testing, some of the numbers were a little bit high. So they they sent me in for some further testing. I got that done and then it took me six months to get in for my follow-up appointment. Six freaking months, keep that in mind. So I go for my appointment the other day and this is that six month appointment that I've been waiting for. Keep in mind, my doctor scheduled me for the, for the follow-up blood work and I had to get a salivary test done as well. When I saw the endocrinologist, he was like, yeah, we need to do some follow-up testing because the results aren't just aren't conclusive enough. We need to figure it out. So I go in for the appointment for them to tell me the results of the follow-up testing, which took six months, mind you. So I go into the appointment, I'm sitting down and the doctor walks up to me. I've never met this guy before in my life, by the way. It was a different doctor than the first doctor that scheduled the follow-up testing. That one switched to a new practice, which is so sucky. That's literally happened to me so 
much. I don't know if this has happened to you guys. Every doctor that I love ends up leaving the practice and going to a new place, which is like, you know, it's their right. They have the right to like move around and find a place that works best for them. Just sucks because they're all moving like out of state and stuff or like to a way far away place. It ends up not working out that I can see the same doctors. Wait a minute. I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory because I want it to make sense. I'm going to make it make sense. If you didn't know, if you're new here, if you don't know anything about my life, if you don't know anything about my backstory, I tried to get pregnant for five years. I am infertile, which really sucks. I've come to terms with it. And then in those terms that I've tried to come to, I have tried to tell myself that I don't want children because it really sucks to be somebody with infertility that has issues that are really hard to fix and to also want for something so badly that it's just, it's just life ruining, you know? So in that, I tried for a baby for five years. I went to fertility doctors. I went to a reproductive endocrinologist. I have done everything short of IVF, which is in vitro fertilization. If you don't know what that is, basically you have to get a bunch of shots. They stimulate your ovaries. You produce a whole bunch of follicles and eggs, and then they harvest those eggs. And then they take your husband's sperm and then they stick them into the eggs and then they fertilize them in a Petri dish and then they implant them into you. It's a process. It's also $15,000. So not a lot of people can do IVF. It's not just like some easy go around that you get done, but it is one of the final steps that if all the other things don't work, then it's maybe one of the things that you need to consider. So anyway, I've done everything short of IVF basically. When we were trying, we were trying for a really, really long time. We did Clomid for five or six months. I think, different milligram strengths. And then we switched over to a drug called Vimera. I also was doing HCG injections and it was a process. It was a lot. It was one of the like most stressful times of my life. Like I'm not even kidding. It was so much and it was a lot. It was really hard on my body. Well, long story short, none of it worked. I never have been pregnant in my entire life. I've never experienced pregnancy of any sort. I've never had any of that. So they've determined that I don't ovulate. It's the PCOS. Anyway, it's a thing. So I've gone through all of that. All of that's in my chart. Had the guy decided to even look at it. Is this cute or is this stupid? I don't care. And I've been dealing with PCOS and talking to doctors and dealing with endocrine issues my literal entire adult life. Since I was diagnosed when I was 19, I've had this since I was young. Like I've been having irregular periods and issues forever. Long story short, I have been having issues and I'm seeing doctors because I'm just having issues, okay? And I went into the doctor, did all those testing things that I had talked to you guys about, had to see the endocrinologist. He wanted me in for the follow-up stuff. So I'm back in for my follow-up appointment. I'm sitting in the room waiting for him. And mind you, I've been waiting six months for this appointment. Six months is a really long time to wait. He walks in and I had never met this guy before. And he doesn't shake my hand. He doesn't introduce himself to me. He doesn't ask me my name. He walks in and he says, and I quote, and with this same attitude, mind you, I'm gonna talk to you the way he talked to me in the same tone of voice, everything. And just imagine a doctor talking to you this way, a human being, much less somebody that's like supposed to be there to help you. He said, yeah, so you're here for some follow-up testing or something? Am I, am I, am I correct? Like you're here because of like some follow-up testing? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm here for you to give me the results. Talk to me about the testing and everything that I had gotten done. And he was like, well, your tests are normal, so yeah, I think that uh, your test was barely even abnormal the first time, so I don't even really know why they had you redo the testing. Yeah, everything here is fine, so I there's really no reason for you to be here. And I said, okay, well, I have some other questions for you in regards to that, because if my testing came back good this time, then what are the cause for the issues that I've been having? And he said, well, I see here you have PCOS. So really PCOS is an infertility problem. That's literally it. So if you ever wanna get pregnant, you're going to have a hard time. Um, if you've already taken the medication that helps with that is like our first line of defense and that didn't work, then you need to see a reproductive endocrinologist, which you said you've already done. So if you've already done that, then really your only option is IVF, if that even works. 
First of all, I wasn't there because I wanted to get pregnant. I don't know why he's literally harping on me about getting pregnant. I already know all of this. I already know everything you're talking to me about right now. And had you asked me even for one second what I was there for, I don't know why we're even discussing pregnancy, dude. I don't even care. That's not why we're here. We're here because of the issues I've been having. And so I said, okay, well, yeah, I'm not looking to get pregnant. I already know all of that. And he was like, yeah, so it doesn't matter whatever whatever else you're gonna talk about. PCOS, the thing that you are talking about, it's only a pregnancy issue. And also the only other issue that you're likely ever going to get is diabetes. So I assume that knowing you with PCOS sitting here right now, the issue you're going to have is that in five years, if I see you back in here, you're gonna have diabetes. <laughs> fucking asshole. And I was like, okay. Oh, okay, well, what what can I do about that? What are the chances that that's gonna happen? He goes 50-50 and there's, there's nothing. I mean, so if you wanna get pregnant, you go to a reproductive endocrinologist. If you don't, well, then there's nothing that we can do. You already know this and I think we're done here and walked out of the room. So that was my doctor's appointment. I've never had a doctor be blatantly such a piece of literal fucking garbage to me. He was so rude to me. I literally couldn't believe, it's like he hated me. It's literally like from the moment he walked in, he hated me. And he had come in with his idea that I was wasting his time because the test results were normal. So why are you even here? Um, sir, I didn't know the test results were normal until I literally just walked into the room. So how do you expect me to know that? I don't know. You're supposed to be telling me the results. Don't be mad at me because they were normal. I don't know what you want me to do here, dude. He was so unbelievably rude. Just his tone of voice was like he literally fucking hated me. I'd never met this guy in my life. The previous endocrinologist that I had speak to, the nicest guy, like the one that ordered all the testing. Oh my God, literally night and day difference. Like the nicest human being, so kind, so patient, so wonderful. And this guy was the opposite. It was literally horrible. It was the worst doctor's experience I had ever had. He was such a dick. He made me feel so low. I came home and had tears in my eyes because he was just, I feel like many times I don't let people talk to me like that. I'm not gonna let you just be a dick to me because you're a doctor, like I don't give a shit, but it was so uncomfortable. It was beyond just like, I don't know, I can't even explain it. It literally felt like he hated me. And I just felt like I was such an inconvenience to him. And he was in there for literally like five minutes. And for the entire five minutes, he was such an unbelievable dickhead to me that I was like, I, I hate you so much. And I just wanted to get the fuck out of his office by any means necessary. Anyway, so I did. I got out of his office and I went home and I talked to my husband. And I can tell you that for the first time in a long time, I felt sad about infertility again. And this guy made me feel so low. He kept making comments of like, if you can even get pregnant, then X, Y, Z. Like I didn't even go into his office talking about pregnancy. I don't know why that was even on his mind. I never brought it up once. I didn't care to talk about pregnancy. I have moved past it. I know I can't get pregnant. I fucking know, dude. And, and he just sat there like, that was the only thing on his mind as if all I could ever want to go into his office was about pregnancy. It made me so upset and I haven't thought about pregnancy since I have like been trying. Like I've talked to you guys about the fact that like maybe one day I might want kids. I don't know. He basically made me feel like, well, your biological clock is ticking, ma'am. And if you don't start trying now, well, you're never going to get pregnant. And you probably never will anyway, because all you are is gonna get diabetes. And all you are is going to have PCOS your entire life because you have infertility. And if you've already been to a reproductive endocrinologist and that didn't work, then you probably, nothing may ever work. He literally said those things to me, like in so many words, like he was basically talking to me with that same tone that I just had. You know, you've already tried it. So if you said that that didn't work, well then that was the only thing that does work. So basically you've already tried all the things that work for people, so you're fucked. So I think we're done here. That's how it felt, that's how it was. Like if you guys could have been a fly on the wall, you would have been like, dude, this guy is such an asshole and I hate him. So that was last week. And after that appointment, I've been really low. I've been having a really, really rough time. I really try not to let that kind of crap get to me 
because I have made my peace with the fact that I likely will never be a mom with my own biological child. And this guy just really drove it on home for me. So that was fun. I had that appointment and I came home and I was just in a really, really rough spot. I didn't talk to anybody about it. I talked to my friends about it and I talked to Zach. And other than that, I've just been like having a contemplation moment. I've been just looking at my life and you can feel totally good about something. It's like, it's like okay, it's like when somebody talks to you about your weight, okay? Like you feel like you're in a fine place, like no big deal. Like my weight's the, le the least important thing on my mind. Like who'd care? Nobody gives a shit. Like I'm living my best life. I'm enjoying myself. You don't think about your weight. It's not. It's an insignificant part of who I am as a human being, enjoying myself living and then somebody calls you fat and it's not something that you even think about anymore it's not even something you consider as a part of your identity now you can't stop readjusting your clothes every time you sit down because somebody mentioned it now you can't stop thinking about it every time you go to put something in your mouth you think about it every time you do anything or if somebody's looking at you you think oh they're looking at me because i'm fat it's reinforcing those things that you didn't even think about yourself and that's what i fucking hate this guy put into my mind that you're infertile, <laughs> you're probably never gonna be able to have kids. And now I can't quit thinking about it. And so I had let that part of myself go, done. I haven't thought about it in a long time because frankly, I am happy, I'm living my life, I don't have kids and that's fine. But this guy made every time anybody says the word kids now, I cry. So that's been really, really fun. And also I'm on my period. So that's even funner because it makes it even worse because everything that everybody says is just even that more emotionally disturbing for me. That's where I've been mentally. It's not been fun for me at all. Frankly, it's been the worst. So anyway, that's where I've been. I'm just trying to like get out of that weird headspace that I've been in. I don't like it. I like being who I was. I like being somebody that was like, you know what, I'm fine. And, and most days I am fine. I am. But it just keeps creeping in because now I'm realizing every time somebody mentions something about kids, there I am, those doctor's words in my head. Every other doctor that I've seen has just been wonderful and it's not been a problem and I I can't complain. The doctors that I have had have been so, so good. I've gotten really lucky with people, but man, all it takes is one. It's like what I was talking about. It's like when people get mad at people for only addressing the negative comments. I've been there too. I get annoyed with people. It's like, dude, why do you keep addressing it? Why does it bother you so much when there's so many positive comments? I was talking to my friend about this the other day because it's a really good analogy to explain how human beings can focus on the negative instead of the positive. Why would influencers do that? Why would people do that? I'm like, this, this is a doctor situation. Like I have so many good ones, but this one will stand out for me forever. I'm gonna use the Lunar Beauty Dreamsicle. Oh, that's good. Say you're working in retail and you have 200 customers come in. And out of those 200 customers, all of them said, thank you so much, have a good day. At the end of the transaction, everything was good, everything was fine. The whole process of talking to them and helping them all throughout, fine, no issues at all. And then you have a customer come in and that customer walks in and they throw a bag at your face and the clothes go everywhere. They start screaming at you about how incompetent you are and how fuck you and how dare you and your terrible associate and I want my refund. It's just like a horrible experience. From the moment they talk to you, they've berated you, they've told you that you're terrible at your job, that you're awful at customer service and you are all flustered when they leave and it's all you can think about and talk about for the rest of the night and it takes one. It takes one situation like that to really push you past that level. And for the rest of the night, all you can talk about, you get home from work and everyone asks you, how was today? And you're like, dude, this fucking asshole came in. He screamed at me. He told me that I was terrible at my job and all I was doing was just what I was supposed to be doing. I wasn't doing anything. Like it was no big deal. And then he had to like ruin my day and make it so terrible. That is a negative comment. That is a doctor's appointment. It's the same as that. All it takes is one to really just <sighs> ruin everything. It could be not that big a deal. Like it's not that big a deal. Get over it, Christy. I am. I'm fine. Whatever. It's been a week. I'm over it. It's that one comment on YouTube. That one comment that just really ruins you. Like me. Last week, I read a negative thread about myself. I did. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And you know what it did? Destroyed me. It destroyed me mentally. And I don't like that because it's not the majority of people that feel that way. And I shouldn't have read it. I shouldn't have, but I did. It's that same situation. It is the one 
customer had something negative to say and it'll stick with you. And it's the same thing with commenters on YouTube. It's the same thing with the one doctor at the doctor's office. Sometimes it sticks with you and you don't try to focus on the negative. It's not even like that. You're not just trying to focus on the negative. It sticks out because even among the sea of all the positive things that happened, it sucks that as humans we're that way. It sucks that our minds naturally gear towards that one really jarring moment. But I think that's what it comes down to is that it's like a moment that sticks out because it is the rarity. I think if you heard only negative comments all day and then you got one really positive one, that one might stick out to you as well. I don't know. And maybe it's just that negative things or bad experiences just hit harder because they trigger a different emotional response. And that's where I've been for the last week. Maybe I've been off YouTube a little bit. Maybe I've just been a little bit more absent and I have. I'm just over it, dude. Like I'm over letting myself feel one way or another because of that 201th customer because of that 201th 201th as if that's a freaking number because of that 201st customer you know i'm sick of letting that one person be the majority in my mind you know and that's what that doctor did to me he really got under my skin he really brought back all of the insecurities that I haven't felt in 10 years. And the thing is, is that as an adult, I have become more emotional as I've gotten older. And I, I've talked about this before. These lashes are stunning. These are the Huda Beauty Lashes Lottie number 19 Lux Silk Lashes. These are literally stunning. Wow, I am in love. But yeah, as I've gotten older and just life in general, man, I'm emotional and I am, I don't know, man. I can't even explain it. Like I'm just, I'm different. Things hit different when, when you're 30. They sure do. How old am I? I'm 30, right? Am I 31? 1997. I'm 31, aren't I? Am I almost 32? No, I'm almost 32. Oh my God. Well, that'll be another thing I can dwell on for the rest of the day. <laughs> Am I a year older than I thought? No, I'm almost 32. Okay, yeah, that's about what I thought. I'm totally fine. Like I'm in a fine place. I've just been in my own head, man. I'm in my own head. I am judging everything that I do. Every second of the day, I judge everything that I do. And I think too much about all of the actions that I take and all, of, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm so hard on myself for everything. And I've been doing that real bad lately, real bad with everything. And I think we all just go through the motions. This is time of year, maybe. It's been kind of crummy outside and I definitely I think that the weather has contributed a bit. These lashes are stunning and I love them with every fiber of my being. That's what's been up. That's what I've been up to. It's been a moment for me. But you know what? I'm not letting that guy get under my skin. Things have gotten a little bit better. And as my hormones start to relax a little bit, maybe I will be fine. But he got me right at the hormonal moment. And I think that's why things are like messing with me a little bit more than they normally would because I'm already so sensitive right now. I'm so sensitive. Everything is getting to me. I'm like extra annoyed by everything that everybody's doing and everybody's saying. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm a wreck. <laughs> it is a hard time for to be RBK right now. I think I'm going to darker center the lip color. Maybe like this color. Okay. Nice. This is ColourPop Bichette. Bichette? Bichette. But yeah, I don't want anyone thinking that I'm trying to like complain or get sympathy or like, oh, woe is me, feel bad for me. Not at all. I'm just explaining what happened because, dude, it's just like, I feel like sometimes things just get to me a little bit more. And that's when where I'm at. I don't know about you guys. But like I said, when I had that Twitter moment where I posted about my appointment, the sheer amount of people that are like, oh my God, I get that. I had a shitty doctor too. I'm like, how frequent does this happen to people? This color is stunning, by the way. I have a zit on my lips, so it makes my lips look like I didn't do a very good job. So thanks. Thanks, I hate it. Not the craziest look I've ever done. Maybe some more at this one. This is the Lunar Beauty Enchantment. Mm, that's pretty. The lips look a little like infected. I'd put like a color like kind of blended out on the edges. I look semi ill. I feel like my lips look a little bit like too pink, but maybe not. Maybe I can add a little bit of just a teeny little bit of this color right here somewhere so that it looks a little more, I don't know, good. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a little bit of that more fuchsia-y color, like run it up here, kind of rounding out the look a little. This is a little like alien-esque in a way. Maybe if I do, I'm gonna do like a little V moment right here. Hmm, that's cute. I like that. I like that. This is the Urban Decay. Ooh, this is pretty. This is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter and this is in the shade Disco Daydream. So yeah, that's what I've been doing for the last week. As if any of you were sitting around just wondering 
wow, what is Christy up to? Well, that was it. Have some other really exciting things happening and uh, I can't wait to be able to talk about them in more, I mean, I could, I guess right now, but I'm just like holding off. I know that that's like, a big thing is that like, it just seems like YouTubers are complaining and like, oh my God, I so get it. I so get it. It does sound like I'm complaining. You know why it does sound like that? Because I am. I'm just complaining. I, I have nothing to complain about. My life is really good. Just, you know, when things get heavy, sometimes they get heavy all at the same time. And being an adult is hard, man. I feel like it's kind of cute. I feel like it's fun. And it got the... It got the creativity in me flowing, so that's always fun. So this is the finished look, I think. I like it, I think it's cute, I think it's fun, and I like it. So I hope you guys like it as well, and that you guys like this video, me just chatting, spilling my heart out. Um, Please be easy on me in the comments. I'm really fragile right now, I'm very fragile. I thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, if you guys are interested in signing up for HelloFresh, I will have the link in the description of this video. You guys can get $80 off with eight free meals on your first month of signing up for HelloFresh. Just use the code RawBeauty8 at checkout and I thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't yet and I uh, will see you at my next video bye hello meals and And that will save you $80 off with eight free meals on your first time signing up for Hello Month. Hello Month. Hello Month. Where's my brush? Hello? Dude, I am trash. Like I am a literal trash human. Kind of, this one piece color. I just spit. A and I really like That's when adpocalypse. Ah. Then the algorithm switches off because. As if any of you. Bye! Bye! It's getting harder and harder to say bye. Just because I'm getting old.